welcome to yet another interview and knowledge share here on Cancer Prevention Day. We're really excited to have you join us and I get to introduce to you the esteemed uh, Erica Ramos and one of my personal, very close friends. And I'm so lucky to spend some time with her and pick her brain this afternoon. So Erica, thank you for joining us. I wanna tell you a little bit about Erica really quickly before I let her let her share anything. She is the Vice President of Population Genomics at Genome Medical, a national medical practice with a mission of integrating genomics into everyday healthcare. Prior to joining Genome Medical, Erica focused on developing programs to accelerate the responsible adoption and integration of genomics into preventative care and population health with organizations like Geisinger Health and Illumina. She also practiced as a clinical genetic counselor for 11 years and was also one of my favorite things to share about her because I think it's so awesome. She was the 2000 2018 president of the National Society of Genetic Counselors. I feel like I wish I had like applause <laughs> cued right here. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> but I'm so excited that she's able to spend some time with us today. Um, and we got to chat the other day about cancer prevention and how that is super correlated to her field of genetic counseling. So thank you so much for your time. And I'm so privileged to spend time with you this afternoon. Thank you. With Without further ado, um, you know my story, Erica. Erica was one that, that came by and checked on me throughout my whole cancer treatment journey. And uh, she knows my story really well and that I received a diagnosis of invasive ductal carcinoma. And I have absolutely no familial, familial history of breast cancer. Um, and one of the things that Erica shared with me, and I'm gonna have her explore this right now, is uh, the question, is a, gen is a diagnosis with no hereditary link something that's common? Yeah, and we know that even though we hear more and more about the genetics of breast cancer, the vast majority of people who get breast cancer don't have something hereditary. They don't have something that they inherited from a parent that put them at very high risk in and of itself. Um, however, there are about 5 to 10% of people with all sorts of different types of cancer who do have these hereditary risks. And what that means is that all by itself, having ch genetic changes can increase your risk for certain cancers really significantly above what the population risk is. Um, two of the genes that you hear a lot about are called the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. And those are genes that increase the, the risk for breast cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, um, aggressive prostate cancers, um, and even male breast cancer. And we actually know that probably about one in 150 to two, one in 200 people in the general population have those changes. And that can cause a greater than 60% risk for breast cancer, up to about a 45% risk of ovarian cancer, and much higher risks of those other cancers as well. So even though most people don't have these genes, it's really important for us to find the five or 10% of people who will get cancer um, because they have them. And so um, in, if, you're, if you have a family history of, or a personal history of any cancer at a really young age, you know, earlier than average, which is why, you know, you were looked at for genetic testing, Kelly, um, any, anybody with ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer, aggressive prostate cancers, um, early onset colon cancer or uterine cancer before age 50, these are all the types of things that are kind of big red flags to those of us in genetics and where we really recommend that people see, um, talk to their doctors about their personal and family history and then potentially see a genetic counselor. <laughs> 